Welcome to Gospel Preaching, a presentation of Gospel Time Ministries Incorporated. I'm Dave Rigg, coming your way from my home, located about six miles north of Albion, Illinois. Scripture for today's message comes from the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6. I'm going to read first verses 6 through 10, and then verses 17 through 19 reading as usual from the New King James translation of the original Greek text. 1 Timothy chapter 6, beginning at verse 6. God's Word says, But godliness actually is a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. Did you get that word? Contentment. Verse 7. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. And if we have food and covering with these, we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of of all sorts of evil, and some, by longing for it, have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many a pang. Now let's skip down to verse 17 here in 1 Timothy chapter 6. Instruct those who are rich in this present world not to be conceited or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. Instruct them to be good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. And finally, verse 19, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. Would you pause with me just a moment for a word of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I ask for your blessing on the reading of the Holy Word. I pray for your guidance, Lord, through the Holy Spirit, that I might deliver this message today in the way that you would want it to be spoken. And Lord, that you would continue to send these messages out to the people that you wish to receive them. This I pray in Jesus' name, and amen. Got a question for you. If you watch very much television, have you noticed how easy it has become to do some gambling? If you watch a Major League Baseball game or a National Football League professional football game, you might have noticed that at the bottom of the screen on your television, there will be a set of numbers next to the names of the teams. You may have wondered what that's all about. Well, friends, those are the odds if you want to place a bet on a certain team. Now, we know this. Pete Rose, several years ago, he got kicked out of Major League Baseball for placing bets on baseball games. And now, even though Pete Rose, and don't get me wrong here now, I've never been a fan of Pete Rose. But anyway, even though at one time I had a chance to interview Pete Rose. But anyway, that's a side note. Even though Pete Rose has been banned from being uh, in the Hall of Fame, Major League Baseball now is encouraging people to place bets on baseball games. Lots of people like to go to the racetracks to place bet on the races of horses. Saw an interesting story. Preacher saw a homeless man sitting on a park bench one day, and this man seemed to be in deep misery. So the preacher walks up to the man sitting on the bench, and he hands him a $20 bill, and he whispered to the man, Never despair. Well, the next day, the preacher sees this man again, but this time the man is coming towards the preacher. The man gives the preacher three $20 bills, $60. 
The preacher looks at the money and he asks, well, what's this for? The man says, you were right. Never Despair came in first yesterday, paying out six to one odds in the fourth race. <laughs> Some people like to go to Las Vegas. Or maybe if you don't want to go that far and you don't have to anymore, there are a lot of casinos all around the area. So some people like to go to a casino. But you really don't even have to go to a casino these days to do some gambling. All you have to do is just buy some lottery tickets. Go into any convenience store in the area and you're likable to see right there on the counter all kinds of lottery tickets for you to possibly purchase. Now let me give you a little thing to think about. Suppose you had a savings account in a bank worth $5,000. You're saving money in a bank, you've got $5,000 there on, in savings. So you get a call from the president of the bank and he says to you, we aren't paying very much interest these days, especially on savings accounts. So what I want to do is I want to take that $5,000 of yours and use it to buy lottery tickets. And then, see, if I spend $5,000 in lottery tickets, those tickets that I buy for you, you could hit it big and make a big return on your money rather than interest on your $5,000 in savings. What would you do if that happened to you? I know what I'd do. I'd change banks. I wouldn't want no bank president buying lottery tickets with my savings account money. But that presents a problem or a question anyway. And this is very important for us to consider in this message today. What's wrong with buying lottery tickets or betting on horse races or on baseball games or football games or any other thing. What's wrong with doing that, especially if some people would try to use the excuse that I, I just do it to have some fun. It's fun to do that. What's wrong with that? Many times Christians will say, show me a verse in the Bible that prohibits gambling. In other words, you show me, Brother Dave, uh, a verse in the Bible in the Old Testament or New Testament that says, thou shalt not gamble. Well, I'll have to admit, you will not find a verse that says, thou shalt not gamble. But I would also answer you is there is nothing in the Bible that says, thou shalt not use methamphetamines or meth. So, I ask you, is it okay then if there's no Bible in the, or no verse in the Bible that says thou shalt not use meth? Is it, is it okay then to use meth? Or is it okay to manufacture meth? Of course not. <laughs> Biblical principles take care of why it's wrong to make or use methamphetamines. It's illegal. How about these? Thou shalt not drive 80 miles per hour through a school zone. Is there a verse in the Bible that says that? No, no such verse in the Bible. You see, the Bible is not a simple list of do's and don'ts. If it were, our Bible would be so big that it would take a semi to haul it around. So, if you want to, friends, it's possible for you to find loopholes in what the Bible might say is right or wrong. There is no verse in the Bible that says, thou shalt not buy lottery tickets. But let's look at some biblical principles which show, in my opinion, that it is clearly, undeniably sinful to gamble. Here's point number one. Gambling is not the same 
as taking a risk. You got that? Gambling is not the same as taking a risk. Not all risks are gambling. Nowhere in the Bible does it condemn, or condemn all forms of taking risks. You see, friends, if you just think about this, you take a risk every time you get in your car, right? It can be very dangerous to drive a car down the highway these days. And every farmer who ever plants a crop in his field, he takes a risk that those seeds that he plants will germinate, grow a big number of corn stalks or bean stalk or bean plants or whatever he's trying to raise, and that eventually he's going to be able to harvest a nice crop. So he takes a risk in doing that. Listen to a parable that Jesus taught one day that's recorded in the 25th chapter of the book of Matthew, and I'm going to start reading at verse 24. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. You see, Jesus actually condemned a man here for burying his treasure instead of investing it. Okay? Friends, investing your money in savings accounts is not gambling. Oh, I know your bank could, uh, could go out of business, could fail. But even then, FDIC covers any money you might have in the bank. And I would also say that investing in the stock market is not the same as gambling. There might be a little risk. But it is not really gambling. Again, I'm telling you, friends, that not all taking risks is wrong. But gambling, I believe it is. You see, gambling winnings come from gambling losses. For every winner, there has to be many, 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 many losers. One person gains because many, 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 many other people lose. Nothing is produced whatsoever there. Nothing is created new. No goods or no services exchange hands in gambling. Now with stocks, of course, something very different does happen. Businesses are built. Goods are created, services are rendered, which in turn makes more wealth to reward everyone involved in investing in stocks. Savings in banks can be loaned out to other businesses or to farmers. The businessman and the farmer become more productive because of putting money in savings. But gambling, friends, it's entirely different. Gambling is one person trying to get into other people's pockets without any effort whatsoever to earn the money they might get back by winning a gamble. You see, gambling consumes, but it does not produce. It creates no new money and no new goods. Let's move on to point number two. The devil provides reasons why gambling seems to be good. Did you get that? The devil provides reasons why gambling seems to be good. You see, the devil provides his lies mixed in with a little bit of truth 
in an effort to deceive us. He says, gambling will raise money for education. It will create new jobs. There will be new jobs at the casinos. It will create more construction as they build these casinos. Or it will build better roads by the money that the state makes through the lottery. You see, the devil provides all these little reasons why gambling seems to be a productive thing to do. No, friends, it's just another government tax as the poor become even poorer as they try to win back their losses in gambling. George Washington said one time, gambling is the child of avarice, the brother of iniquity, and the father of mischief. That's what our father of our nation said about gambling. You see, friends, I firmly believe this. Gambling contradicts God's honesty principle. Did you get that? Gambling contradicts God's honesty principle. Exodus chapter 20, verse 15 says very clearly, thou shalt not steal. Friends, gambling breaks the spirit of that command because gambling is robbery by mutual consent. In other words, you are taking money out of somebody else's pocket and they're letting you do it. Just because both parties seem to be consented to this idea, friends, that does not make it right. It simply shows that they both had covetousness in their hearts. A little illustration. Two men walk into an alley. One man has a gun, and he walks out with the other man's money. Or, here's another illustration. One man has a pair of dice, and he walks out with the other man's money. What's the difference there? Well, in the first key case, there was a thief, right? The guy with the gun steals from the guy in an alley who has some money. In the second case, there are two thieves. Both of them certainly have a desire to take what rightfully belongs to somebody else. The man who gambles and wins is a thief. The man who gambles and loses, in my opinion, is a fool. Let's move on to point number three. Gambling contradicts God's love principle. That's an important point. Gambling contradicts God's love principle. Listen to what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 22, beginning at verse 35. These are the words of the Lord Jesus. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Now listen to verse 38. This is the first and great commandment. Now, verse 39, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments have all the law and the prophets. So, in that passage here, Jesus said all of the commandments that you might find in the Old Testament or any of the other commandments that you might find in the New Testament, Jesus said all of them hinge on two Number one, love God, and number two, love your neighbor, right? You know it's right. Well, friends, nothing violates that more than gambling. How can you love your neighbor while you're trying to get what belongs to him? Gambling is pleasure and profit at the cost of another person's pain and loss. Let's move on to point number four. Gambling contradicts God's work principle. Now, this is a good one here. Gambling contradicts God's work principle. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, God's word says very clearly, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. So in the Bible, honest work and wages 
always go together, just like this. Honest work and wages, okay? The Bible does not support getting something for nothing. Did you get that? The Bible does not support that, getting something for nothing. Virgil Peterson used to be the crime commissioner in Chicago, and I found an interesting quote from him on the internet. Let me read it to you. He said, gambling produces no wealth. It simply redistributes it from the hands of the many to the hands of the few. Gambling invariably leads to higher police and welfare costs. Senator Alexander Wiley of Wisconsin said this, the idea that legalized gambling will be a revenue raiser is an illusion. Every dollar raised from such sources means $5 spent in higher police costs, court costs, penitentiary costs, and welfare or relief costs. We know this, Nevada is often referred to as the gambling capital of the United States. Did you know that the crime rate in Nevada is twice the national average? And the suicide rate in Nevada is triple the national rate. Henry Reed, chairman of the Nevada Gambling Control Commission, said this, Any state trying to follow Nevada's lead will find that the social costs far outweighed any economic advantage. Herbert Jenkins, former president of the International Association of Police Chiefs, said this, For every dollar received from gambling, government spends $10 fighting problems directly related to legalized gambling, including prostitution, embezzlement, bad checks, and police corruption. Racketeers and mobsters swarm to gambling communities and bring with them other sordid businesses. And we know that's exactly what has happened many, many times in Las Vegas. Legalized gambling, including the lottery, in my opinion, is a tax that preys upon people who can least afford it. I really believe if you would check out, you would see that a majority of people who buy lottery tickets, a majority of people who go to place bets at the racetracks, who form in other or get involved in other form of gambling, are the least likely to be able to afford losing that money. Did you know that the biggest day of the month at the Atlantic City gambling tables is the day that the welfare checks come out. That's right. So many people then are taking their welfare checks instead of using it to buy food and clothing for their children and pay their rent and stuff, they're heading to the casino at Atlantic City to gamble it away. Point number five. Gambling contradicts God's stewardship principle. Gambling contradicts God's stewardship principle. Let me ask you this. What percentage of your money actually, according to the Bible, belongs to God? Think about that. Well, some people would say uh, 10%. No, <laughs> no. According to the Bible, whatever you have in finances really belongs to God. It belongs to him 100%. Good stewardship says, don't flush God's money down the toilet. We are called by scripture, God's word, to be good stewards of everything that God provides to us. And when you go out and buy lottery tickets, go to the casinos, go to Las Vegas, go to the racetrack, whatever, in a sense, you're flushing money down the toilet, friends, or don't throw it out the window. We know that would be wrong to take money out of our wallets and go in and throw it in the pot and flush it down the stool or throw it out the window. That would be stupid, wouldn't it? 
But friends, I say to you, so is gambling with God's money being the wrong thing to do. Let me ask you this. Those of you who belong to a church, if you heard that your church was buying lottery tickets with the money that you put in the offering plate every Sunday, how would you feel about that? I would say that's God's money in that offering plate because God says all money is really his. Now, some Christians will say to us, Brother Dave, going to a casino, going to Las Vegas, buying some lottery tickets, going to a race check, it's just entertainment. It's just a way of having some fun. They go with a certain amount of money, some of these people to Las Vegas, and they play the slot machines, or they go to a casino somewhere and they feed that one-armed bandit, as they're sometimes called, and when they have the intention that they walk in there when their money is gone, it's gone. You better believe it's gone. God's money is gone. And you're still responsible to God for who ends up with your money and what will be done with that money. Let me ask you this question. Who do you think controls the casinos? Do you honestly believe that people who own casinos are honest businessmen? What do they do with the money that they earn in these casinos? Have you ever, if you've ever been to Las Vegas, I've never been there and have no desire to go there, but they have a lot of bright lights. And those casinos in Las Vegas are very fancy and elaborate. And some of these casinos that have popped up in our area. They're pretty fancy too. Well, where's, how's that money, where's that money coming from to pay for all these lavish facilities? You know where it's coming from. They're making big money on the money that's being gambled by people who are trying to get rich. Ask yourself, what goes on in Las Vegas or in Atlantic City, the two biggest gambling capitals in the United States. Friends, if you do some research, I think you'll find those two places depend heavily upon the revenue that they get from people who gamble there to support immorality. A lot of narcotics, a lot of prostitution, a lot of murders, a lot of intimidation, a lot of bribery, all of those things go on big time in those big gambling capitals. Friends, lottery ticket buyers are simply being motivated by a greed and covetousness. They want more than what they have earned. They are trying to get something for nothing. Point number six. Gambling contradicts God's trust principle. This is another important point. Gambling contradicts God's trust principle. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Well, you see, friends, gambling strikes at the root of our belief in a God who provides for the needs of his people. You're simply believing that God is not providing for me all that I need. I don't trust him to provide all that I need, even though his, his, his word says he will, but I don't trust that, so I want to go buy a lottery ticket or do some gambling so I can get rich. No, friends, you got to understand, we who are born-again Christians serve a God who cares. He has promised in his word to meet our needs. Maybe not everything that we want, not everything that we desire, not everything that we covet to have, but he has promised to provide our basic needs. I don't know about you, but I'm not depending upon a lottery ticket. I am depending upon the Lord. 
Some of the saddest faces you'll ever see are at the casinos after they've lost all their money. Some Christians justify gambling as just good, clean fun. Not according to the faces inside, if you'll take a look around, I think. Now again, I've never been in there, but I've seen some, uh, some movies or some video uh, in news reports of people who were in gambling casinos. Every rare winner in a casino helps getting that money by playing away their winnings and then some. That, that's often true. Someone, let's say they, they pull the one arm bandit and a whole bunch of coins come out. Well, the first thing I ask is, where did all that money come from that was in that machine? Did the casino put that money in there? No. Other people who'd been using that machine before put all that money in there. But what happens in many times is someone does hit it big, and what do they do in many cases, maybe not all the time, but in many cases, they go right back there and try to use more of that money to earn even more money. You see, even the rare winners cannot seem to help by playing away their winnings to get more. A grandma in Hawaii won $100 on her first try with a scratch-off lottery ticket. Do you know what she did? She used that $100 to buy more lottery tickets trying to win the big jackpot. And then <laughs> somehow she comes up with another $200 to buy even more tickets. And do you think she won any money? No. Nope. She lost even the $100 she had won with that first ticket. Point number seven. Gambling contradicts God's danger principle. Gambling contradicts God's danger principle. Proverbs 6, verse 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? Ooh. Let me say something here concerning that verse. No alcoholic ever planned on becoming a drunk when he took that first drink of alcohol. No drug addict ever planned on being addicted to that drug the first time he took a dose of meth. No rapist ever planned on doing that terrible thing when he first looked at porn magazines or videos. No gambler planned on becoming addicted to gambling with just that first lottery ticket. I want you to, to do this. Next time you're watching a, a basketball game, a football game, or a baseball game, you look at the advertisements, like FanDuel and all these other things, and there'll be a little in fine print, if you have a gambling problem, here's a phone number to call. Why do you think they need that? Because they know, they know that what they're trying to get you to do has a big danger of causing you to get addicted to gambling. Statistics show that 8% of those people who say they gambled the first time just for fun became compulsive gamblers. 8%. Now, I know that's a small percentage, but I still think that's a dangerous percentage. Here's another thing. 85% will steal from their employer to pay their gambling debts. And I remind you what I read to you just a few seconds ago from Proverbs 6, 27. Can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? Friends, gambling is designed for you to lose. It is extremely unfair. First, for one person... To win any money, many, 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 many people lose. I ask you, can you see God in any of that? And number two, gambling targets the poor. Now, I'm not saying that rich people who've got lots of money never gamble. But statistics do show 
that a majority of people who buy lottery tickets, a majority of the people who go to casinos and do gambling, they're not rich people. And third, friends, gambling does, in many cases, show that it destroys the local economy. In closing, I would say this. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 say, those who want to get rich fall into temptation. Now, what is temptation? It is a foolish and harmful desire. That's what temptation is. Why are they harmful? Because they plunge men into ruin and often destruction. But as money, is money really, as many people often misquote, is money the root of all evil, as some people would say? No, you see, that's a misquote of what the Bible says. It says, for by longing for it, that is the longing for the money, some have wandered away from the faith. So it's the love of money that is sinful, not the money itself. Now, again, in closing this message, what is more important to the born-again Christian, your faith or your wallet? When we do the right thing, that is being content with what God has provided for us. I say to you, friends, don't be lured into the sin of gambling. It is a devious device of Satan, and it will bring no good into your life. I'm thankful that I've never been tempted to buy a lottery ticket. I hope those of you who have been buying lottery tickets will think about it after watching this video. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for the opportunity to come each week with these messages you lay upon my heart. And Lord, I know that uh, this is a message that had to be preached today because of the way gambling is becoming so rampant around our nation. Uh, gam more people are gambling today than at ever any other time in the history of this nation. And it can be so destructive to families and to lives of people. Use this message, Lord, today, I pray in Jesus' name. And amen. Well, thank you for watching Gospel Preaching today. Hopefully the Lord will give me another week of life and another opportunity to come next week with another message for you to watch here on Gospel Preaching. My prayer is that in the meantime, the Lord will richly, not through gambling, but will richly bless you.